During cataract surgery, many people consider the capsularexis to be one of the most critical and crucial parts of the entire case because it occurs early in the case and every subsequent step after it is determined by the success of the capsularexis. So if there's an issue with the capsularexis, it oftentimes makes the rest of cataract surgery much more challenging. So during this case, I'm going to walk through an AC runout and how we manage that. And so here you see me starting the capsularexis with the cystitome. Typically, I start the capsularexis with either utrata forceps or MST capsularexis forceps. However, in this case, they weren't readily available, so I started it with the cystitome, um, as you can see here. And I made a little nick out temporally, or made a little nick inferiorly, and then pulled the um, capsularexis with the cystitome down to the subincisional area. And at this point, we had the capsularexis forceps ready. I went in and grabbed it with the intramural forceps to continue the rest of the capsularexis. But watch here. You can actually see immediately after grabbing the, the capsularexis flap, it runs radial. It extends um, almost underneath the iris in this very dilated iris. And so let me go back on that just for a second. And you can see that let's see, right here, instead of grabbing the flap, I also grab the underlying capsule. And when I do that and pull it like I normally extend a capsularexis, it just immediately dips out radially and extends. And so I feel like after I've looked at this a little bit more, I can actually see that it's starting to curve around. It doesn't look like it's going all the way to the equator or all the way posterior. In this situation, having a very dilated pupil, that helps me be able to diagnose this and figure out that I feel like I should be able to extend this all the way around. Um, and so I grab it using the little technique, not only pulling centrally, but almost pulling in the opposite direction. I can get that capsularexis edge to become a little bit more centrally. And see here I grab again, and you can see that edge really come more back into our view. And so at this point, I'm really starting to feel like I'm going to be able to save this capsularexis despite having this pretty large run out. And then so now that I have it more in a central area, I'm able to grab it like normal and then trace the area that I'm, I want the capsularexis to run. And being again very gentle, wanting to make sure that I'm not having any other issues right here and then complete the capsularexis successfully, even though it had this pretty significant run out. And then so during the rest of this case, I'm gonna show it to you a little bit in fast forward where it's showing phaco emulsification with horizontal chop technique, trying to reduce the pressure on zonules and the capsule and while I'm getting this lens out. And you can see that this goes uneventfully. Typically, we use either coaxial or bimanual. We have both readily available. In this situation, I used a bimanual for capsule for the um, to remove the capsule um, with irrigation and aspiration to put to have a little bit more control and put less pressure on the capsule itself. And then, so here you can see the remaining cortex was removed and filling the eye with viscoelastic and putting in a three-piece lens into the bag. We use the um, Bausch & Lomb soft port lens as our standard monofocal lens. So it gives us the ability to be able to put it in the sulcus or in the bag. And so in this case, the bag was perfectly intact. It just had a little bit of an AC run out, was able to inject it into the bag and have a successful case. So this shows the benefit of using the little technique to save the AC runout and the capsularexis and thus saving the rest of cataract surgery. Thanks for watching.